Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of December. <laughs> first things that I want to talk about today that I should have talked about in my TBR takedown video but I forgot but I'm really excited about is this guy. Um, I should have talked about it in the TBR takedown because it's technically a book that I hauled but it doesn't count towards going towards anything because I can't read it because it's in Serbian but anyway this is the Serbian edition of Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. She's beauty, she's grace, I love her she's great. I love this cover. I fell in love with it. I ordered from an entirely Serbian website. It was about $14 to get it shipped to the United States. Let me rephrase. It was $14 for the book and shipping. $14. And I was like, well, if the Serbian website isn't real and I wasted $14, it's, it's, there are worse things in the world than that. I ordered this from a website that I couldn't read and paid $14 for it. And it only took like four weeks to get here and it's gorgeous and I love it and I'm so happy to have it and add it to my Susan Dinner collection and I'm really happy to have this foreign edition of one of my favorite books. This guy's gonna go on the shelf and live there forever but that's not why you're here. You're here for a wrap-up but I just wanted to talk about this book because it's here and it's pretty. So cool. Moving on. This month I read nine books and I would tell you the total number of pages but I didn't write that down. I read nine books. It was plenty of pages. Let's move on. As always I will discuss this from the lowest rated to the highest rated and we will be starting off with Wrapped Up in You by Talia Hibbert. I gave this a four out of five stars which tells you that my reading month was fucking great. FYI. So this is a Kobo original. You can only get it on Kobo. It's a free app to download and when I read this book the day after Christmas it was a free download still. Um, I even think a couple of days after that it was still free to download. So if you have a Kobo app you can just download it on your phone and you can look and see if the ebook is still free. The audiobook was a couple of dollars but the free ebook was free. It is a novella. It follows a very prickly heroine who is going to her grandmother's house for Christmas and every year at Christmas her, her brothers, uh, I think she has four brothers, and a childhood friend who is now like a Hollywood movie star always get together and she has always had this huge crush on the family friend and unbeknownst to her he's also always had a crush on her and he is a total cinnamon roll and it is just the cutest thing. It is a little dark. There's a lot to do with um, she was previously married and was in a very abusive relationship so there is aspects of that and they do discuss that in the book so that is a little bit of a heavier topic but it is very caring, very sweet, very Christmassy and I love, as you will see as this month goes on, I love a prickly heroine and a cinnamon roll hero. It's like my favorite thing of all time in adult romance books. Probably because I would be a prickly heroine. Yeah. Next we have The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan. I also gave this a four out of five stars. This book follows three adopted sisters who are going home for Christmas. One of the sisters lives at home with the mother in Scotland and two of the sisters live in New York City. And so they're all coming together for Christmas and the book really um, just follows like them and their abrasive lifestyle. It looks very happy and it does get very happy but it's also if you know what I'm saying. This is much more character driven than plot driven uh, which I don't mind because I really enjoyed the characters. I think the characters are very real, very flawed, um, great characters that I really enjoyed reading and learning more about as the book moved on. It was very Christmassy and one of the the big plot points and talking points of this book is that it discusses how much childhood trauma can affect your adulthood. Uh, the three sisters were adopted by their mom's best friend after their mother was killed. Their, both of their parents were killed in an accident. And as the book goes through you kind of learn that they didn't have the best parents to begin with. And so them ending up in this foster situation and this adoption situation was one of the best things to happen for them. But all three of them still hold a lot of negative thoughts about their childhood. And some of them are not even what they think that they were. So it's very heavy on that topic. They also discuss um, 
parenting and how just because you don't parent the same way someone else does doesn't mean that you're a bad parent. It just means you're a different kind of parent, which makes sense because all kids are different and all, ki all kids need a different type of parent in order to be corrected. So uh, very character driven, very Christmassy, really enjoyed this one. Next we have My New Crush Gave to Me by Shani Petroff. I gave this a four out of five stars. This book follows Charlie who is a high school junior and she is trying to win the heart of a senior jock football player who is like she thinks is perfect for her because she's very punctual, very detail oriented. She is all about having schedules and plans for everything that she does and she feels like this guy is very similar. And she gets his name in a secret Santa and so she wants to impress him by the gifts that she gets him. Unfortunately she doesn't know enough about him to buy him good gifts. So she has to recruit his cousin JD whom she kind of hates and the book follows that whole spiel. If you can't tell from the synopsis, which you can tell from the synopsis because the last line is, yet the more time Charlie spends with JD, the more she starts to wonder, does she really know what or rather who she wants for Christmas? So this book is super Christmassy. It is enemies to lovers, which you know I fucking love. I'm always here for. It is a prickly heroine with a cinnamon roll hero. Always here for that. I told you it was going to be a theme this month. This has all of the Christmas vibes and Charlie's best friend is also Jewish so they do a lot of Hanukkah traditions as well because the book actually takes place before Christmas um, like the weeks leading up to Christmas so there's a lot of Hanukkah in there as well with her best friend's family celebrating Hanukkah. Loved this book. It was really good. This book would have rated a million times higher. It would have been closer to the five range if it wasn't for this ugly ass cover because you know I rate covers in with the book because I do judge a book by its cover and if the cover isn't interesting it doesn't make me want to pick it up. So it would have been closer to a five had it not been for the cover. It is a YA romance and you do know what's going to happen. It's really just about the journey of getting there not about what's going to happen. It's not a mystery as I said. Next is Wrapped Up for Christmas by Caitlin Duncan. Caitlin is an author tuber here on YouTube and I will link her in the description box below if you'd like to check her out. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This book follows Angie who right before Christmas loses her job, her boyfriend, and her home all in one fell swoop upon finding out that her boyfriend is actually engaged. So she has to go back home to a small town and figure out what she's going to do next with her life. When she gets home she realizes that her grandparents are actually living in the house with her and her mother. She didn't know what was happening they are like having their house exterminated so they have to be there for Christmas which I love family hijinks at Christmas. Wonderful. And so this book follows Andy trying to figure out her new life, um, trying to get a job to hold her over until she can get a job that she really wants and meeting the cute boy at work and how their lives are going to change forever. This unlike a lot of the other books that I read this month is a clean romance so if you're not into the sexy time bits this one you can read it's clean. This has some amazing side characters. The grandparents are amazing. Uh, her best friend is heavily pregnant and so funny and sarcastic. I love her. There are some really really great characters in this. I think Nick and Angie's romance, again it's a romance so like you know what's gonna happen. It's not like a secret what's gonna happen in this book, right? Okay. I love their interactions and just the things that they do for Christmas and how they are learning more about each other and how Angie is very much, she's always been that person who like hops from relationship to relationship and she's very aware of that and she is very much like I don't really want a relationship right now. I need to spend some time with me and figure my own shit out and Nick is very receptive of that. So I love a guy that's like cool I get it I can wait because I like you so I'm just gonna like hang out over here and when you're ready I'm here and I am here for that. Next is How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories Forever Shall Be Known on my channel as King of Elfheim because I'm not saying that whole title every time I talk about it. Moving on. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This is a set of novellas that follow both Cardin as he's growing up figuring out why he turns into the person that he turns into and then the first and last story are Jude and Cardin after the final events of the Folk of the Air series. So there's a lot of the past and a little bit of the future. It is also illustrated so it's actually a really short read because there's a lot of pictures in it and they're gorgeous. 
I feel like if you liked the books you'll like this. I enjoyed this ending the ending the view that we get of Jude and Carden after the final of book three a lot better than I liked a lot of book three because I feel like book three was really rushed. It's the whole thing. It's been a year since I read it. I'm still mad about it. Let's move on. So I did really enjoy this. As I said, I gave it a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I think if you liked the series, then you might as well invest in this because it was a good time. We then have Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. I gave this a 4.5 out of five stars. This is the second book in the Bromance Book Club series, which I read the first book, I think in either January or February this year. I read it earlier this year. Either way, loved it. Loved this. They're great. This book series follows a group of men who are athletes, businessmen, government officials, people who are higher up in society and really struggle with connecting with their spouses and their girlfriends. And so they've formed this group of men who read women's romance novels and they use what they learn from the romance novels to help them with their daily lives. So this book follows Mac who is one of the main characters from the first book and one of my favorite things about this whole book is Mac is that guy who has always pushed everyone else to talk about their feelings. Like I don't care. You need to talk about it. If you don't talk about it, we can't fix it. We need to know how you're feeling, what's going on. If you don't tell us all the dirty details, we can't help you. And then when it comes to him having to tell the dirty details, he's like, I can't do it. It's hard. Please don't make me tell you. And they're like, dude, you got to do it. Like, you got to do it. And so, like, I love the fact that Max, like, getting payback for all of the shit that he's done to these other guys. There is an overarching theme of this series that communication is key in a relationship. And I love that aspect of it because I believe that that is one of the main tenets of a good relationship is communication. This book does involve a like crime subplot where Mac and some of the other guys and the leading lady of this Liv, who is the sister of the leading lady from the first book, they are trying to take down this businessman who is sexually harassing women and using his power to make women do things that they wouldn't normally do so that he doesn't blackball them from the industry. I 100% one of my favorite things about this book was the way that all of the men reacted to finding out that this businessman was a skeeve. Like all of the guys were just like what? Let's kill him. Like let's take him down. Like this guy's a fucking let's just take him out. Like I loved the way that the men reacted. I really enjoyed the series. It is not a clean read. Don't read it if you're not into people being naked because that happens a lot and uh, I'm really enjoying this series so. Speaking of people being naked, Beach Read by Emily Henry. I really just said that because it's also not a clean book. Neither is the next one. Moving on. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. This book follows January who upon the death of her father learns that he had this whole other second life and he left her a beach house. She has been writing women's fiction and is really struggling with the next book that she's supposed to be writing and so she's kind of lost everything. She doesn't have any very much money left so she moves into this beach house that her father left her and she's like okay I've got to focus and I've got to write this next book. Her next door neighbor is Gus who was this arch enemy to her in college and he writes crime novels. They're both struggling getting their next book out. They're both kind of struggling with things that are going on in their personal lives and they decide to make this bet on who can write each other's genre better. So they take on each other's genre and they spend time together trying to figure out trying to help each other and kind of like have these lessons in each other's genres to help the other person try to figure it out while also still trying to win the bet. I know I said I love a prickly heroine and a cinnamon roll hero but like these guys are both grumps and I love it. They're both grumpy and angry and I just love it. It is however an enemies to lovers trope which I also love. So like there's that. One of my favorite things about this book is the banter between the two main characters and also like they go to a, a carnival. Okay, they go to a carnival and they see like a pregnant girl by the ferris wheel and he's like, all right, she joins a cult. She is taken away from her family. She follows these people. Um, her and the baby both die. Like that's, that's his crime novel. And she's like, no, actually, um, her boyfriend slash husband is, I don't know, away for war and he's gonna come home in time to see the baby, whatever. Like, 
they have completely different views of things. So they go out into the real world and they see things and they describe it the way that they would see it from their genre. I love it. It is so good. Like I love that aspect of it. That is probably my favorite thing about this book. Like the plot, okay sure. But like the actual um, descriptions of writers, writing, um, how you come up with stories, the different ways, all of that. In, yeah, yeah, all of that. Love it here for it. Because it is a romance, it does have a lot of warm fuzzy feelings and I also really enjoy those. So there's that. Oh wait, speaking of people being naked again, <laughs> take a hint. Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Also, naked people. Imagine that. I give it a say 4.75 out of 5 stars. This is the second book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. This follows Danny Brown, the second sister. To be fair, you don't need to read the first book to have read this book, but you should because it's really good. So this book follows Danny who is a very strict woman who is very much about her career and she doesn't do relationships. She's only into friends with benefits types of situations. She doesn't want a relationship. She doesn't want to be committed to anybody. She is all about just getting her rocks off and doing what she's got to do. She has a really good friendship with Zaf who is a security guard at the college that she works at and there is like a fire drill gone wrong and Zaf has to rescue her and it's caught on video and the whole globe starts freaking out about Zaf and Danny and Zaf convinces Danny that it would be really good for his charity that supports children to have a fake dating which fake dating trope y'all I'm here for that and so they kind of have this fake dating relationship which may or may not turn into more but it's a romance so you know where it's going as do I. First off this book is witchy AF. Nobody told me that this book was witchy so I'm pissed at y'all. Ain't nobody telling me about this book being witchy so like I hate you. Cool. It is once again a prickly heroine with a cinnamon roll hero. It is the fake dating trope. It's not enemies to lovers because they're friends first. It's friends to lovers. The relationship is both so incredibly pure and wonderful and also completely dirty and raunchy at the same time and I don't know how Talia does it but she does it so well. Like she toes the line and just does both things so amazingly well. Absolutely love it. I didn't love the dark moment in the plot like the super dark moment that you get to the plot twist the plot I, I didn't love it. It wasn't my favorite thing. It has a lot to do with like social media and just being the type of person who has been hurt in the past and not really wanting to let anyone else in because of that and also grief and loss and dealing with depression and anxiety. There's a lot to unpack here but this book, this series overall is really good. I think Talia is doing an amazing job with this series. And the final book that we're going to talk about today is War Maidens by Kelly Kuhn. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. This is the second book in the Grave Maidens duology. This book follows Kamani who is the daughter of a really great healer in the village that she lives in. Her family has kind of always lived in the palace and they have served the royal family and the Lugal who is their king of sorts and at some point her father was un unable to save the life of one of the royal family members so her family is cast out and they must live with the commoners. At one point the Lugal becomes very ill and in their society when the Lugal is going to die they pick three young women who are to be put in the burial chamber with him to eventually die and then serve him in the afterlife because that's what patriarchies do. The series follows Kamani trying to heal the Lugal because her younger sister Nenea is chosen as one of the grave maidens and she knows that if she heals the Lugal then her sister will be released and her family won't have to go through losing her sister. Um, this does deal a lot with grief, addiction, um, a lot of different topics a lot of different dark talk topics, um, sexual assault, sexual abuse, um, just a lot of things. It's a very heavy series but I love that in a fantasy, especially a YA fantasy. I feel like teenagers are definitely capable of handling anything that's in here and I just really enjoy that it is brought, it, it's being brought to the forefront more now, especially in a fantasy book where there's some, a little bit of magic involved. Um, but a lot of like herbalism and things like that. There's no technology. So when they're dealing with like our modern day things in a society without modern day technology, I just really love it. This was, book was 
so good. I actually liked this book better than the first book. I think this dealt with a lot more of the heavy topics but the themes overall were all there. It once again has a prickly heroine with a cinnamon roll hero. I read a lot of that this month. It's my jam. I'm here for it. I think that Kelly's character work is god tier. Like her characters are so wonderfully done, so wonderfully crafted, so well put together. They are just flawed and just the way that they discuss, especially Kamani, because we're in Kamani's brain. Listening to Kamani, who is this healer who is supposed to be a not to do harm to people and yet in order for her to do the things that she needs to do she's going to have to cause harm to some people and the choices that she makes and the way that she has to learn to listen to her heart and her head instead of the things that she can see and hear around her just so many good things in this book really really loved it I cannot say enough great things about this series overall so there we have the books that I read in December. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these and if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, or concerns about them. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. So if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>